welcome back to my channel. Um, anyways, uh, yes, we are filming in a different area. I think I actually might be filming in this area from now on. This is like kind of in where my desk is, like where I do a lot of editing and stuff. Um, we moved around some of our furniture, so I used to sit on the couch, but now that doesn't really have like direct sunlight because I use direct sunlight to film, so yeah. There's something that I wanted to say at the beginning of this video, and now it completely like left my brain, but um, I actually like wasn't sure what to film for today's video, and I was kind of like struggling between a couple videos, but then I was like, you know what, I really want to do this one and like talk a little bit more about my pumping schedule and like what I've been doing with pumping because it like um I talked a little bit about it in my postpartum six week postpartum video which I'll link up above um but a lot more has like happened since then so I wanted to fill you guys in and if you're thinking of exclusively pumping or like pumping at work or something and how to kind of integrate the intro integrate that into your schedule Hopefully, like, this will help. I do have my notes, so if I'm, like, looking down, that's why, obviously. I always have notes. Like, I just, I can't remember anything unless I write it down. But today's been, like, completely hectic, like, normal. Uh, and I'm supposed to be pumping in a little bit. So I really wanted to sit down and film this video for you guys. Okay, let's just get into the video. So the first thing I want to say about explaining my pump schedule is that everybody's pump schedule like is going to be different because everybody's body sort of responds differently to their pump and if you're you know you're if you're also pumping and nursing like it's going to be a little different if you're pumping and working and I don't know it's it's all going to be different this is kind of this is like a rough version of what I do because it's not going to be perfect every day you do sort of have to like accept that you can't just like do everything all the time at the same exact time e even though like they say for an exclusive pumper like you should be pumping like at exactly the same time of day that's like really unrealistic because you can't you can't always do that and your baby if you were exclusively nursing um, isn't going to be nursing at the exact same time each day so yeah um, but I did just want to put out, put that out there that um, it might be a little different. And I am going to say, um, you know, like averagely how much I get in an ounce. And I just wanted to point out that everybody's different. God darn it, my phone. We're back. Now, uh, so essentially what I did because um, this was a surrogate pregnancy and I don't have an infant. But this kind of will go... Uh, towards mamas who want to exclusively pump and aren't really interested in nursing or maybe like want to nurse in the beginning and then like switch to exclusively pumping but really you can start pumping whenever I started pumping like I don't know an hour after I delivered maybe even less like I don't really remember because you know I was like delivered a child um, but I started pumping for the colostrum and I think I pumped like for a couple minutes or so, like maybe 15, 10 minutes. Um, because in the beginning, you're not gonna get much and you're not gonna get much for like a couple days and that's fine um, because baby's belly is literally like the size of your pinky nail. So, you know, if they just get like this much, like that's enough for them. And it's high, the colostrum's like highly concentrated as well. So, you know, don't feel like, oh my God, I need to make like five ounces like the second day, like your milk, you know, it can take a little while to come in. I know with this pregnancy, I felt like it took a lot longer to come in than it did with my boys, but you know, it's, it's different each time and it's different for everybody too. Like sometimes it'll come in the next day or a few hours. Sometimes it can come in in five days and both are normal. Um, so I, after I pumped that first time, I started pumping every three hours. Some people say every two to three hours. I feel like two hours is just a little bit like ridiculous. I mean, a baby would probably nurse every two hours and I feel like that's a little bit easier to deal with because you can just stick them on where like the pump stuff, you have to set everything up, clean it, do all that. Two hours, I feel like that could kind of, you know, screw with your mental health. So I did every three hours and every four hours at night. Mind you, I also, you know, didn't have a baby. So like that was kind of helpful, but I feel like you can go with 
uh, the kind of rule of when the baby sleeps, you can pump, you know, if the baby doesn't wake up, you know, you can also pump then. It's really like up to you, but I just did every three hours during the day and then four hours at night. And I did that um, till I was about like six week, six weeks postpartum and then I dropped that middle of the night pump. So my middle of the night pump was at 1 a.m. So I dropped that and now I'm only waking up at 4 a.m. for like my middle of the night pump because I'm only uh, two months postpartum now. I still need to like keep up my supply and kind of act like I have a newborn. I am pumping six to seven times a day. I try to make it to seven before I the six week mark I was pumping eight times a day and you know since then dropped that uh, middle of the night pump but for eight times a day it's nice if you pumped at uh, 4 a.m. 7 a.m. 10 a.m. oh sorry I can't even like read my own writing 1 p.m. 3 p.m. Uh, 4 p.m. 6 and to 8 to 10 p.m. So I'll like have links down below to of like charts and stuff that you guys can look at. There's some really good like Instagram pages. I'll also link those so you guys can kind of get like a better idea. But that was just kind of my schedule. So now I also have this really great app which if you're thinking of pumping at all I would definitely get this app. Um, it's called Pump Log and it you can set it where it'll alert you to pump every three hours, four hours, two hours, whatever and it's super easy to use and you can track everything you can track your freezer staff staff stash um fridge stash it also like gives you a week like your status so how many ounces you've made in a week in a day whatever like it's really nice to kind of like visually see that so that's what i do i'm pumping seven times a day every three hours and my middle of the night pump is considered 4 a.m I also try to pump for at least 25 minutes to 30 minutes. Now that may seem like a lot. If you're exclusively nursing as well, or like nursing as well, um, you probably don't need to pump that much since your baby's also nursing and nursing will draw out the milk um, a lot better than any pump will. So you will like get a full drain when your baby nurses. But when you pump, you still like don't actually take out every single drop of milk because you're using like a machine to take out the milk. So you might have to even pump longer, like between 30 to 45 minutes. It really depends like in the morning. So at that 4 a.m. pump, I sometimes pump for 35 to 40 minutes just because I'm still, you know, letting down and milk is still coming out. And you definitely want to drain yourself as much as much as possible because if you don't that's when you'll get the clogs you don't want to become too engorged too often because that's when you can also get clogs um, you don't want anything to be really tight here you don't really want to sleep on your stomach just you know because you don't really want to put too much pressure here so that's why no underwire bras you know make sure the bra it doesn't need to be like really loose like you don't need to be uncomfortably out there but you know something like the nursing bras are usually like a little softer and they don't you know keep everything like up here but you know that's all part of it so I'm averaging about 50 to 55 ounces a day it really depends sometimes it's more sometimes it's closer to 60 um, but it really ranges some people like averagely um, a baby should be eating 25 to 35 ounces a day. So mine is considered an oversupply. But if you're pumping 25 to 35 ounces a day, that's completely perfect because you're adequate, you're average, you're making exactly what a baby would need, and that's good. If you're pumping less, then you don't have as much of a supply. But I would just keep adding pumps or try to change your diet or um, you know try some lactation supplements or cookies things like that um, the mother's milk tea is really really good I know you have to drink like a boatload of that um, you can also intake more calories that can help with your supply water is a big thing you're taking out water essentially so you need to keep like hydrating I always like drink like at, at least eight ounces while I'm pumping 
uh, just to like so before I sit down I'll make sure I have a water and I'll like drink that you know as I'm pumping and that also kind of like helps with my letdown because I feel like as I'm swallowing the water it just I don't know it just like kind of helps water <laughs> I don't know I'm not making any sense but but your pump schedule could really you know really should work around your life so I try to get up as early as possible for that 4 a.m. one obviously and then my next one is usually at 7 to 8 a.m. but it doesn't always like get that way like sometimes I can't because I do have two kids that I have to bring to school and like you know get ready for the day so I don't always like get my pumps in at the exact same time but it's really nice with that app because it'll alert me but I'd like to at four months postpartum go down to at least to like five pumps per day because I feel like then it would be a little bit easier with my schedule like right now um, I do feel like I'm rushing around a lot since I am um, donating now to a milk bank I have been officially approved which is so awesome the cleaning regimen for this milk bank is a lot more intense than for like a full term baby because the milk that I am donating will go to premature babies so after I pump um, I need to make sure to sanitize my hands before even touching any of the pump parts and um, I also need to sanitize and clean all my pump parts like pretty much immediately after I'm done pumping and freeze the milk immediately after I'm done pumping so that can take a little while um, I do have a sterilizer now and I love my wubby it's awesome I'm not really sure if I'm saying that right but you know it looks like wubby or wobby or wooby I think it's wubby or wob I think it's wobby actually let's just waste 10 minutes trying to figure out how to pronounce something so I do want to do a more in-depth video on um, like this milk bank thing. The other thing that I found out, which I will link this down below, is that there's this thing that they call like a what's your capacity as a pumper. So I'll link it the little chart. But what it essentially is is how much you can, how much milk you can carry in your breasts uh, if you skip a pump. So sometimes what will happen is you'll skip a pump, and then you go and pump, and you get like two or three extra ounces and you're just like oh my god you know that's great but that can also be deceiving like you shouldn't you know keep skipping pumps to try and get more milk like you should keep sticking to your schedule uh, but that would mean that you have a larger capacity which means that you can hold more where some people they'll go a t extra two three hours but still only get like five ounces on each side or two ounces on each side or something so I'll put that chart so you can like figure out what you are. I'm considered, I think, large capacity. So my camera died again. All right, so it's called what is your magic number? And it says max pump yielded from both breasts at your middle or AM pump. So um, largest capacity is 10 plus ounces. Um, large capacity is five to nine ounces average is three to five ounces small is two to three and smallest is one to two to increase your milk supply if you have an average um, capacity you need to pump uh, eight to ten times a day so I really like this chart like it really helped me kind of like understand like what my body needed in order to keep up my supply so I'm considered largest capacity so that's um, 10 plus ounces with both sides combined in either your middle of the night or a.m. pump so to increase my milk supply I need to go to uh, four to five times a day so I'm actually at more than that which is good because I'm still in kind of like the newborn stage of pumping if that makes sense to maintain my milk supply I need to I would go to three to four times a day to decrease it I would go to two so let's just do the average one so averagely to increase your milk supply if you made three to five ounces in your middle of the night pump you would need to pump eight to ten times a day to maintain it you would need to pump six times a day and to decrease it you would have to pump four to five times a day so I'll like link that chart below um, it was super informative and helpful for me and um, I hope it would be helpful for you guys but you know you will have to make time for these pumps if you're at work I highly suggest using the fridge method or they also call it the pitcher method so that's where you pump 
into your bottles and then you put that milk into a pitcher into the fridge and you could you know you combined all your milk essentially and you leave that in the fridge your whole day and then when you come home then you can bag all that milk evenly and put those bags in the freezer or do whatever you want uh, that way there then you don't have to like bring a ton of bottles with you like you can only you only need to bring your two bottles you can rinse them or not even rinse them you can just put them in a pumperoo or a wet bag um, stick that in the fridge with the pitcher and then when you need to pump again at work everything's there I would highly suggest not putting your flanges in the fridge because they can be really cold and if you put like really cold stuff on your breasts when you're trying to pump um, you probably won't get like the best of letdowns so those you might want to like wash a little or just rinse you can put them out to dry like on a paper towel or something and then come back and pump again at your next time at work uh, the other thing is too is to also like look into a pump for work something like the free me or something that's small that you can kind of like hide and like be at your desk or something working if your work is a little bit more like say you're a nurse or something I would definitely check into the freemies um, those you can like legit walk around in I still want to try those I just I haven't really had time yet because I'm still like pumping so often so definitely bear with me because I am going to be trying a lot more pumps I just like haven't quite had the time and since I am still like trying to maintain my supply but the motif was super super good and the Sonata was good too just like the parts were a little bit like wonky but I do really like the Sonata and my Baby Buddha I've been using a ton like that's my go-to pump right now is the Baby Buddha so I love my Baby Buddha and also like I'm always talking about um, my Lavi warmers mine are oh wait here we go mine are actually charging right now but yep I always talk about these and um, I'll leave the coupon code here excuse me on the screen for you guys to save 10% um, if you want to support me and the company Thank you to everybody who's already used my code. Um, it means a lot. So, yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I wanted to say. But I will have, like, a lot of information linked below for you guys to, like, really figure out, you know, what time of days you want to pump. But really, pump whenever you want. Like, you can pump before the baby nurses. You can pump after the baby nurses. It really doesn't matter. The baby will make enough milk like it'll stimulate a, a letdown for you even if you pump before because baby's mouth is completely like a hundred percent uh made to you know stimulate that letdown really really well and if you want to keep your supply up just pump more it's a give and take so the more you pump the more you nurse the more you're gonna make essentially i wouldn't make you know like you don't need to make a hundred ounces a day like you don't you really don't like the people who make a hundred ounces a day they have troubles because like they get clogs a lot they have like a massive surplus of milk like I just ran into that where I had to like give away some milk and it, but it was also really good because I was helping babies in need and that's really what matters but you don't need to make that like thousand ounces that people see on Facebook or like Instagram or even YouTube like you don't need to make that much you literally just need to make as much as your baby needs and hopefully that what you pump and what you nurse is enough for your baby and if it's not that's totally fine like formula is completely fine I am I'm all for formula I'm all for nursing I think you should try both you know like I I've I've done nursing pumping and formula I've done them all like um, because I don't have a baby right now because I was a surrogate um, you know I'm not using formula but with my boys like I used formula I started introducing it at like five or six months and it was just like their nighttime feed like their nighttime bottle was just a formula and I liked it it helped me I like wasn't exclusively pumping I was pumping in the mornings also side note if you want like more milk um, pump in the morning uh, you have like your hormones are higher at in the morning and at night so you're gonna like get more milk so if you're kind of like a one or two okay um, my card was full so I'm not really sure where it ended but I feel like I'm just rambling and I don't want to just ramble for you guys because that's not fun.
but I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. We just wanted to kind of like give an update on the pump. Well, I don't even know if I updated about the milk. Anyways, let me just quickly put that in here. So the surrogate mother is no longer taking the milk for the surrogate baby. She doesn't want it anymore, um, which is fine. And I am now going to be giving it all to this milk bank. I'm like just trying to get rid of the milk that I was saving for them. So I'm giving that just to like my local community. And then once that's kind of gone, then I'll have more room for the milk bank milk. Um, but yeah, that's my goal now is just to donate to this milk bank. That's kind of like my job. I am contracted with them. Uh, so, and this milk bank is specifically for surrogates, which is awesome. Anyways, um... I need to go pump because I can feel that that needs to happen. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already because we are literally almost to 100 and that giveaway is coming soon. So look out for that and I will see you guys in my next.